Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 602, being recorded on October 21st, 2020. I'm Sebastian Peake. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. Uh, I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. And to get our housekeeping out of the way, you can subscribe to find out when we go live for events such as this live podcast recording session by going to... Uh, PCPer.com slash subscribe as I look at my monitor slash teleprompter here. That tells me you can be alerted before live events like this podcast recording session, which I just said twice. You can help support the site and podcast distribution by heading over to PCPer on Patreon. Patreon.com slash PCPer. And uh, become a patron of the arts. The fine art that we make here. It's performance art. And that's the only name for it, really. See, there's interpretive dancing in one corner. The other two are wisely not joining in. Uh, we have a new patron, Brett. Well, who is this? I would say that's uh, Dramicus. And we have another patron who took a little uh, a siesta, a sabbatical, as it were, and now appreciates the content to the point of where they are willing to become a patron again. And they are Davy S., Davey, so yes, yeah, thank you. thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, patron support is much appreciated and uh, goes towards uh, paying the bills. So thank you very much, everyone. Hey, Josh, I wasn't going to mention anything, but uh, I was going to whip this out later. I wasn't going to see an end in it, though. Ooh, whip it out. Whip yeah. it out. Well, that's yeah. a nice old I mean, Zotac. What, uh, which one models that? That's a, that's a fancy 710 Ooh. GT. One. Look at it. It's, it's a by four, right? No, but it's by no, two. One. By two. One. One. Oh, by one? Well, oh, God. by one. I know. Basically, it's, um, it's a, it's a, this baby will slide into anything, in other words. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, how about my mentions? Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, universal it's... donor or <laughs> contributor. I don't know. It depends on your point of view. And if you've got a narrow case, well, it can be a, a two slaughter. You know, actually, I, I tried to just slip this gently between two other cards because there appeared to be like a space for it just to try it out. But I, uh, because I had another graphics card in an 8X slot at the time, I couldn't get it to boot to this one. Apparently, 8X mm-hmm. is more important than, than 1X. What are you going to do? I feel like I've completely lost the stream already, Brett. What oh, is hi. happening right now? All right, let's move on. It's the time. You can cut this part out, though. I will. <laughs> It's that time of the show <laughs> where we check in with Josh, who will tell us about his latest burger experience. Josh. Boom. This is a pretty good one. Let me uh, let me see what's on. Uh, this is uh, it's a Hawaiian burger, and uh, it's pretty fantastic. I will read you the Hawaiian butter burger. Butter. A four-ounce beef patty. Topped with pineapple pico, fried spam, pepper jack cheese, and what is that kind? Compound butter. What the hell is compound butter? It's butter with other things in it. This is what he's talking about. Vegans, avert your eyes. You know, the fries are really on point, too. Lightly seasoned. Nicely done. Not too dry, not too wet. Good crispy on the outside. The uh, pineapple pico was quite tasty. So, yeah, and you can see a couple of little pieces of spam in, underneath the pico. It was a little salty, but that's, you know, that's fried spam. So, I was going to say, when spam is involved, I expect a little saltiness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Any, yeah anytime you mention stuff. the f- potted meat, right? You know, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it, yeah. You know, it's the a compound preserver. butter is essentially. Aioli, except butter instead of mayo. Gotcha. Thank you for the definition. I know. I think there was some confusion. Wow. So our lead story tonight on the program, Intel SSDs. I should add some sad music here.
The division is being sold off to SK Hynix in a $9 billion deal. $9 billion. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they're getting rid of that, but I guess that it, it makes a little bit more sense because it's such a commodity market and Intel hates commodity markets. Margins on it's going to um, be awful. Yeah, I mean, and plus the, the variability. Um, also, we're, we were in an overproduction state right now, and so yep. oh, yeah. they're expecting extremely inexpensive uh, SSDs Q1 2021. So... Yeah, I, I think Intel is probably getting out at the right time because just the, they, they hate that kind of variability. And I mean, they'll make some money, which is like two quarters worth of profit for them. <laughs> it's not much, um, <laughs> but they'll get that off of the books. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's a positive move for them in their business model. And uh, SK Hynix, that's that's what they do. They're memory and flash and more memory and now they're selling their own ssds which apparently are quite good but intel keeps their they're really fast um yeah they're optane and yeah they're really fast that yeah the one thing that. they held on to yeah yeah no they're not letting go of optane technology yeah which of course is not technically storage it's very complicated i don't fully understand but it's it's kind of in between yeah. main memory and storage. Yeah. Almost. It's, it's like a middle. Yeah. You want to do that next one or do you want to skip no. it? No, we're not ever going to do that. Uh, we could okay. go back to Skype and there'd be less delay, but lower. No, quality. I meant the next story. That's oh, not what I story. meant. Oh, Brett, <laughs> Brett, I decided that we're going to go to the next story. And that next story You're the man. concerns. You're the man. That next story concerns rumors. There's a couple different sources I see here in the show notes. One yep. of them is TechSpot. We're talking about Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs and the fact that, oh, suddenly they're going to have a 320 watt GGP, just like NVIDIA with the 3080. But not hotter, not, uh, of course not. super hot. You remember? Yeah. Well, that's what I said. And you, you like dumped all over me. You said I was high as a kite. <laughs> how, okay, how is it not going to be hotter? Do you remember what temps were like with RDNA? Yes. They're hotter than the sun. Mm, okay. So I don't know how that's going to go down I, when they're using the same process and the clocks are over two gigahertz. We shall see. In a, but, in a week. One yeah. week. Let's see. Where are the, Igor's lab, I think, is this the source here? Yeah, Igor's, yeah, he, he went into it and he kind of reverse engineered based upon the power tables that he could see and kind of back, back his, his way into about that 320 watt TDP. Yeah, which it's reasonable. I mean, 235 watts for the GPU. Mm -hmm. Memory, 20 watts. If these numbers are accurate and they actually decided to clock up, like we've been seeing rumors, I've, I've been seeing rumors the last week or so of 2.4 gigahertz for the or top Or 235, model. yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty high. If it's that's, that high, we could be talking 3090 performance. Maybe even more. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. My gut's kind of saying uh, in between thirty eighty and thirty ninety for their top mm -hmm. end. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would be awesome if they could offer a six ninety nine that had thirty ninety performance, and you could buy oh. it. And you could Good buy God. it. I think <laughs> it doesn't even be insane. They could be lower. Yeah. They could be like, yeah, we're going to offer something between the twenty eighty Ti and the thirty eighty, but you can buy it seven ninety nine. Yeah. No wonder they got approved for that loan. Eight ninety nine. Did you <laughs> see that they? Did you see they put out a memo to the retailer saying, hey, here's some strategies that you can put into play to keep the bots off your back. So what do you think about the die size, by the way, Josh? Look, think about oh, that yield on you know, this. It's, it's nice and large, but it's not like super large. I mean, if you look back at the uh, the old uh, RTX 2080 Ti and the mm. chip they used for mm. that, it was, it was 700 millimeters plus, I think. That it was approaching, you know, reticle limits of, of that um, mm -hmm. 12 nanometer process that they're running it on. And so it's uh, it's very similar in size, I believe, to the 3080. The, the hmm. GA102, is that correct? Let's uh, look on the magic hey. of the internet. Hey, MVG. everybody pause yeah, while we sure use going. Google. Google. 
actually yeah, it's uh, 628 millimeter squared for the uh, GA102. Moving quickly to another answer we've had for the longest time in PCI Express Gen 4 SSD land, we had Fizon and the same E16 controller that was in everything for the first year. They have an E18 controller that's a lot faster. Samsung has their own controller now with the 980 Pro. I think we, we just talked last week or the week before about Western Digital with their yep, new yep. controller. Silicon Motion has a controller. They've got three controllers. Yes, they do. They yeah, the SM-226-7, uh, 2267XT is the Dramless controller, but it's PCI 4.0. Uh, it's not going to be real fast. The mm. next one above it... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, they were saying that essentially it's it's the same for the reads as the and the uh, the non XT and that's the XT you're looking at there. It also comes in this tiny little form factor, which is like ridiculously cute. <laughs> uh, but like, oh, come on, it is. Uh, but you're you're still going to see the same uh, writes of about 500k IOPS, but your reads are dropping down to 200k, and sequential should remain essentially the same on paper. We'll see if it's actually true. But that's uh, like thirty nine hundred or three thousand nine hundred uh, for the read, thirty five three thousand five hundred for the write. Which, you know, not bad for value, right? Yeah, it'll be inexpensive, and the, they'll support PCIe yeah. four point and it's it's made on uh, a twelve nanometer FinFET process from TSMC, as compared mm-hmm. to I think there are twenty eight nanometer and. Even some older ones were like, you know, up to 55 nanometer stuff, these controllers. Yeah, but ancient stuff. They finally got to the point where uh, they needed to get down and, and get the process tech and the power consumption way down because PCI 4.0, right. as we know, it, it eats it up. Uh, just look at uh, AMD's uh, Northbridge IO uh, it, 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 and, and their five, X570 chipset. Uh, it pulls some significant watts. I mean, that's... Uh, what seven to ten, depending on usage, and yeah. when you're talking to a uh, an SSD controller, that's that's too much for a, a little stick of gum. <laughs> but yeah, it's that twenty two sixty four that's going to be fun. So that that's the the full out one with the the quad core Cortex R eight as the base of the controller, and for that puppy, what they're telling us is. No, uh, SSDs okay. are, are getting faster. Yay. More 4.0. options. More options. More options. Finally, more 4.0 controllers. Yeah. Bring, bring it on. Hey. Max. And you also get this in your car. Apparently, Ford and them what? are getting PCIe 4.0 controllers before Intel. Well, hey, Intel's That's... getting out of the business. Is this why Intel's getting out of the business? Nope. They couldn't solve not the, getting... the PCI Gen 4 riddle. They're, they're not getting out of the business of making chipsets. <laughs> Come on. You think they're going to design Intel SST chipsets and then let somebody else make the NAND? Apparently. I thought the press release actually stated, I go back and look at it, but I thought it stated that the SSD business, like the word business was included, like the consumer SSD business I thought was just, was being sold to. But it's not, hmm. I guess the transition doesn't finalize till 2025 or something. Yeah. Nest. Another product. Another Google product. Bites the dust. Jeremy. Shocking, isn't it? You know, that this it's really amazing that on the one hand, Google is in court for being a ridiculous monopoly because everyone uses them for absolutely everything. <gasps> and at the same time, being famous for killing off so many bloody products that at this point, there is no reason to buy most of the hardware that they're putting out unless it's been around for a couple of years. And then at that point, you realize they're probably going to discontinue it anyway, so it's going to be garbage. So in this case, it's specifically the Nest Secure because we've already lost uh, the Nest for home and a couple of other various uh, products from them. It's actually a really freaking impressive list. But in this case, it was that uh, Google signed a $450 million deal or something like that with ADP because ADP didn't have any physical security hardware like Google did. Google didn't have any infrastructure behind it like ADP did. And so it was sort of, oh, well, works with Nest is going to become big. And, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been a total waste to have bought that thermostat 
and that security device and then the extra $65 per detection device and looped it all into my Google Music and wait, this is all going to end horribly, isn't it? And it did. So yeah, after about three years, boom, that's it. In theory, you might be able to sign up with somebody else that will support the hardware that isn't supported by... Oh, good point. I spelled that wrong. ADP, not ADT. Uh, but so essentially all the security systems that you've picked up, if you pick them up and incorporated them with your Nest, well, it, it ain't going to freaking work anymore uh, along with all of the other things that just don't work from Google anymore. And on that note, Brett, uh, we have a podcast sponsor this week, don't we? Absolutely. It's from LinkedIn Jobs. Colorful days of fall are now upon us. Are your small business needs evolving? Despite the current uncertainty, having the right people on your team is like feeling the warmth of being wrapped up in a blanket. So when your business is ready to make that next hire, LinkedIn Jobs can help by matching your role with qualified candidates so that you can find the right person quickly. I think that you'll see that your candidates will be able to locate your offer easily using superior filters for area, experience level, and even by company. LinkedIn is an active community of professionals with more than 706 million members worldwide. Getting started is easier than ever with new features to help you find qualified candidates quickly. Manage job posts and contact candidates from a single view on the familiar LinkedIn.com as functions are streamlined into one simple screen. You can identify strong candidates with an efficient rating system to help quickly get your job in front of more qualified candidates. And now you can do this all from your mobile device, no matter where the day takes you. That's how LinkedIn Jobs can help you hire the right person faster. When your business is ready to make that next hire, find the right person with LinkedIn Jobs. You can pay what you want and get the first $50 off. Just visit linkedin.com slash pcpur. Again, that's linkedin.com slash pcpur to get $50 off your first job post. Terms and conditions apply. And thanks to LinkedIn Jobs for helping support this podcast. Absolutely. Uh, what is this um, 165 hertz refresh rate story, uh, Jeremy? I don't know. Did you write it? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Wow. That's a that's a uh, so bring your Intel CPU you, or don't bother showing up. Oh, <laughs> hey, not for long. <laughs> not for long. Yeah, that's it's very I, true. I wrote no. that. I wrote that. But go ahead. Two weeks. So assuming you've got like a, a three, uh, an RTX 30, 3080 or you're running an older 2080 Ti or 2070 Super, 2060 Super, and you've just bought yourself a fancy 165 hertz monitor. Well, in theory, each and every one of those graphics cards should be able to, at some point, hit that and maintain pushing that to the monitor. But the fact is that your CPU is becoming more and more of an issue again. And so what these guys did is sat down with uh, two different Ryzen's, a uh, Ryzen 5 3600 XT and a Ryzen 9 3950 or 3950X, as well as an i5 10600K and i9 10900K. So, and all of them were overclocked as best they could for stable. So what happens when you test all of these different graphics cards on the two different systems on a variety of uh, games? And what you see is that in a lot of the cases, you get clusters like you're looking at there now, where you've got the 3380s and then the 2080 Ti's paired with Intel start to catch up and then you see the Ryzen 5 3080 come. And so in some cases, especially at the higher resolutions, you would see the graphics cards grouped together like you'd expect to. So the top four are 3080s. The, the second are the 2080 Ti's, so on and so forth down. But it's not like 1080p consistent. though. Yeah. So as you, as you bump up to the 1440p, because that's really what they're looking at, uh, right. and there's 1280, so it's like the, the ultra widescreen, they don't always stay the same. The first couple they do, but if you jump ahead uh, one or two, uh, you'll start to see, well, the first they do the, the widescreen 1080. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's okay. where, of course, you know, Intel and the, the extra megahertz are going to count. But when you get higher up, some of the games like Ghost Recon that you're looking at right now, definitely does together but if you jump ahead uh to some of the other ones Let's and see, of course it didn't memorize ghost recon was. we've got grand theft auto 5 oh there's an old one but hey yeah that's uh, that's a little different because yeah. now you've got a 3080 so like, followed yeah. by a 2080 ti 
Well, you've got Intel, 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 to Ryzen. Yeah, look, yeah. Yeah. Way down, 3950. Yeah, Tomb Raider was another one where where it sort of clusters together with the two, both the Intels, then the Ryzen 9, the two Intels, the Ryzen 9, and then the Ryzen 5 starts to show up a little bit further down. But you've got pairing a Ryzen 5 3600 XT with a 3080, you're going to be behind like a, a 10 600 K with 2080 TI. So you, you spent a little more money than perhaps you should have. Uh, Red Dead Ouch. Redemption is another one that just goes wacky. Well, plus, oh, it's, I see that we're doing it in DX 12. Red Dead is one of those few Vulcan games. Yeah. You can bounce back and forth between. Hmm. So I scroll yeah. down a little bit. Did they test it in uh, Vulcan mode? Uh, I think no, I think they skipped Vulcan okay. with this one. But at twelve, let's see, twenty five sixty by fourteen forty Red Dead two. Uh, these are high settings, no MSAA, and you have what you would expect to be at the top would be the ten nine hundred K and the thirty eighty, which it is, by about six frames per second. Yeah, and then but you, you, there's a delta on those processors, regardless of what video card you're using, which is what for now, because I mean we've got. Uh, a week, seven days, yeah, and things may yep. change completely. It's no, it's no, not that big of a difference. You're talking even at 10, Josh. Like, Josh says no. Josh says no. All right, let me get this off the screen. He says no. Josh just says no. But, but uh, I think this was important to try and keep that in, Intel um, shilling intact. So yeah. we needed to get this story out there as quickly as possible. I think the check might be in the mail. Or them. And the next one's brought to you by SC Hynix. For us, yeah, we needed to get get out there with this story before it might not be true anymore, just to cash in real quick. Do you, okay, do you think there's any chance that there was no nobody even pitched this story to an outlet to say, "Hey, let's talk about high refresh rate gaming for a minute, guys"? Do I think there's no chance that somebody pitched this? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can you guess? Pitched. Was it gigabyte that provided the monitor? <laughs> Was it NVIDIA that prided to the graphics cards or Intel that came out looking a little bit better? Guilty. Uh, I don't know. I like how they (laughs) use the 3600 XT, which is, you know, of course, a little bit closer in price range to the the 10 600. And, of course, the XT just doesn't really give you much of anything in terms of. But, I mean, they did run all core 4.5 gigahertz, so. Uh, and the answer to anyone wondering, the review was sponsored by NVIDIA. Was it actually? Yes, or at least they provided the hardware. Well, well yeah. And suggested the processors mm. to be used. Really? Okay. So it was a <laughs> so sort the, of a sponsored article, kind of. I guess so. I, I yeah, mentioned but that like, right off the bat in my link to them. <laughs> okay. Just so that we don't yell, yell that because another site got linked to was <laughs> it. Look, I, I'm sure <laughs> NVIDIA loves AMD as much as everybody else in the community does. They have no reason to resent them for any reason. Did you really just say that? Did you really say that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> AMD makes processors, right? They don't have anything to worry about. Nvidia they might make one other, at least one other thing. Well, and Intel makes like a mysterious graphics, graphics card, which is <laughs> arriving soon, but we yeah, have hey, no Yeah, that's right. For. Intel makes they, graphics cards. It, it's bikes. I was talking about bikes. Oh, that's right. They do oh, bikes. of course. Yeah. I knew we weren't. I, I knew we were going to go down the whole ATI of. road because, of course, ATI is a different company. But let's move on. Exactly. Um, Nvidia. Speaking of Nvidia, speaking of the sponsor of that last uh, review at Kit Guru, they are allegedly moving Ampere to seven nanometer TSMC next year. Do you think Why that might are they doing help? This? Do you think that might help some of the Why? availability problems they're having with Samsung eight nanometer? Uh, I, plus, plus, I don't plus. think it's availability. I think really? uh, you know they had their no, well it might maybe a little bit but their high end stuff their their enterprise stuff was always correct me if I'm wrong but I think it was always TSMC seven nanometer isn't that right Yeah the A100 is is TSMC yeah. seven nanometer and the forty and the forty the what their new their new A40 what do they call it again the forty the they Brett just keep saying the forty the forty over and over I'm pretty again. sure it was take the forty look it up they're they're, they're are a lot of, of kind of conspiracy theories out there. And then there's some other regular <laughs> theories about why NVIDIA has done this. And I think doofuses <laughs> go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> I think that, um, <laughs> I think the long and short of it is NVIDIA really wanted to get ahead of all the leaks and release 
their stuff with as much thunder as possible instead of, you know, so basically a lot of the leaks come from their board partners that they get these in, they start stockpiling them. Uh, people get, you know, they, they leak to their friends in the press that, you know, that they're working there and, and it just, it, you know, it, it, it steals the thunder and that has made NVIDIA mad for a long time. And so I think that they wanted to get ahead of this with as few cards out as possible to be able to make the biggest splash possible. And it's eaten up a lot of the goodwill people had towards the company uh, because of the way they've done this. So yeah, they've eliminated most of the leaks, pretty much everything that, I mean, uh, it was what about three or four days ahead of the thing. There were a couple of, of, of leaks out there about the, the but you know, the approximate speed. Um, but you know, they, they had their big moment and the unveiling and they said, these are cards are going to be available in two weeks. And of course, you know, we haven't seen crap. And I think that, the regular channel movement is going to be very similar to what we saw with like the original 10 series, the GTX 1070, 1080, um, and eventually the 1080 Ti that uh, it, it was going to take a while for these things to get to market. But you know, the way they had, had announced it, everybody kind of knew the performance of these uh, parts. And so I think we're going to get the bigger uh, chunks here in November. And plus they kind of get to see what AMD is doing as well. And so that allows them a little bit more flexibility um, with pricing. But I don't think that it was, hey, we're going to create some artificial demand um, and make it seem like, you know, I I think it's just, I think it's just channel inventory moving kind of slowly and, uh, the issues with Samsung eight nanometer, um, you know, have that have been rumored is probably another part because uh, apparently NVIDIA was not buying wafers. They were buying per good die. So instead of like saying, Hey, we're going to spend $9,000 on a wafer, but your yields are so crappy. I mean, that puts the price per die up way, way, way high. We're just going to pay per good die because of where you're sitting and you're just going to have to deal with it. Um, so I think Samsung took some took some financial hits. Um, it'd be interesting to kind of dig down into their books and their quarterly earnings to to try to figure that out. But of course, it's such a big company, and their foundries are pretty big too, and they have a lot of sales that you might not be able to pinpoint it nearly that much. But yeah, I think it's just a combination of multiple things. It's not optimal. Um, Nvidia probably didn't want it to go this way, but it's where they're at, and. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Jensen Wong is playing eight dimensional chess with supply and demand. And uh, let's move on to the yeah. one review of the week. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a five minute, five minute it podcast. Is, it's like twenty five minutes, <laughs> which is okay because average view length for podcasts is only about twenty minutes anyway, guys. <laughs> Look at YouTube metrics. Sometimes it's astonishing and depressing. A review of the week comes from Corsair and their new 4000D Airflow. There are three of these 4000 series cases on the market now. A trio, if you will, including the 4000D, as I scroll down, the 4000D Airflow, and the 4000X RGB. Now, the XRGB is one of those, like... They need to do a cross product. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. They need to do with with the Airflowby. No. (laughs) No? Although I will say, adding a vacuum cleaner you know would keep your case so, clean. So you could stick your head like near the case and it cuts your hair? Is yeah, that it? Your hair. Is that what you're saying? Well, hey. It's like hey. the flow bee of case? J- Brett, that was your close-up and you blew it. I mean, I, was, anything- I went, I'm going to whip this out. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, let's do that again. Take two. I'm going to whip this out. No. Keep your single <laughs> slot PC. Is that really a buy one? Is that a buy one graphics card? Zoom Let's in. That. Let's look baby. at that again. Let's go back to the shot. Let's see. Look at Zoom that. in. Just one. That's all of buy one. Buy one single it's, slot. But is it half the, height? I want half height oh, by yeah. one single slot. Yeah. Yeah. So, because because no. I, this is on a removable. I mean, I'm so, so backwards here. This is on a removable. 
set of pins. Does, does so come, yeah, I can I can the, I can half height that. But it's in the other it, room. Do you want, does it come with the half height adapter? That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, of course, for this does. price, yeah, probably does. For this price, absolutely. <laughs> so you're saying if I buy that graphics card, that's a Zotac, right? It is. Only Zotac made the One X, as far as I know. As if as I, I buy know, that, I not only get the, the <laughs> Look at you, flexibility, <laughs> the flexibility of single slot, the flexibility of buy one, but I oh, have the yeah. flexibility of half height right there in the box. I know you right can't believe it. It's in the box. This, this is the package. This podcast segment sponsored by Zotac and the buy one. We're going to do a deep dive on it. This. Was no, they actually deep dive. Those. Deep dive. No, stop touching your graphics card like this. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> Back to the review. The Corsair 4000D Airflow features a ventilated front panel, guys. Let's go to that front ventilated front panel pick. Look how ventilated this is. And it doesn't even look like a cheese grater. It doesn't. Actually, they, they did a nice job of making it fully ventilated in a piece of steel here without it being uh, disturbing to look at. I'm not sure they it did it. It doesn't look bad. They pulled it off. It looks nice. Here's a close-up. Uh, you can see the triangular uh, Oh, it's pattern. got a screen behind it, does, it too. It does nice. have a screen filter behind it, yes. Good. Now, guys, a it, case that looks like this. You can see the screen filter down here, kind of. A mm -hmm. case that looks like this uh, has a fully ventilated front panel, has a tempered glass side panel, comes with a pair of 140 millimeter fans, one for intake, one for exhaust. Uh, Where's my optical drive? It doesn't have that. Damn it. Look at this. Look at these. It has these sort of, I, I like to call these sort of manly style metal pins that snap the front panel in. It's definitely nubbin-like. It is. And there's a, there's a, a, Would it a be screen filter that you can pop right out of there. <laughs> that it is very, very nubbin-esque. Okay. That's a nice built case. How much does it cost? 79 bucks, Josh. That, that ain't no bad. nothing. Okay, I like that. Does it got yeah. USB-C? It does. Look at that top and panel. tempered glass, yeah. magnetically attached stuff. Why? Why is it on its side bucks? here? Look, it's on its side. Why is here, it on its so side? Because I, I always do the top and bottom photos here. Oh, see, there's the top, the bottom of the case has a screen filter. Top of the case, I see it's has removable. A filter. Hey, yeah, I, can I you remove that screen filter? You can without. Okay, Look, you can grab this yellow uh, silicone Corsair logo here and pull that mm. screen filter right off. And look, there's a little yellow. Accent up here. It's not, it's kind of a little bit of a greenish yellow. I don't know if I'd call this chartreuse. Is it a lime yellow? It's kind of a lime yellow. Kind of lime. Would you say, Citrusy. would you say those are there to indicate grab here? I don't know. Yeah. It's like IBM did with blue. Like where, yeah. wherever it was blue, you can yeah. grab and remove. Here's yeah. a you know what? It, the it makes the case oh. not boring. Okay. I it agree. is yeah. little, lots of color. Mm -hmm. that, that's a that's a new color for uh, USB internals there. What speed is that at lime green? What's lime sure. green? Because I know blue. Is it three? I, I wondered it's not quite as fast said, as plaid. But I said, could a, Corsair, <laughs> could a Corsair designer be a fan of MoFi turntables? If you're not familiar with MoFi turntables, I'll click on the Let's link Let's take here. a look. They are black yep. with a yellow accent. Oh. They it's not an accent. A, it's an elastic. Well, you're right. How much is. are those? Uh, so yeah. for this one, if you have to ask this one's it, with or without a cartridge. If you want the Ultra Tracker cartridge, I think this retail for about twenty two hundred. Well, Good Lord. it's just a plate spinner without a cartridge. Dude, this is a, a yeah, but a it Delrin. spins at it such a, a. It has a Delrin platter. One point three. The hell does that mean? It's a Delrin well, is a very strong vinyl like uh, material. Josh, you wouldn't understand. Is it, it like depleted uranium? uranium? It is a lot like depleted uranium, except uh, plastic. -y. Yes, plasticky. Yes, <laughs> I'm losing track of, of the conversation here. Let's see what were we doing. We were talking about the case. man. Am I thirsty? The lime green accents on the Corsair yeah. case. It, it's different. I liked it. It's a black case, and it has these sort of limeish <clears throat> yellow accents. Yeah, and it and doesn't have RGBs, does it? Does not. It's not wrong. It's not wrong so far. Here's the interior. I call this just kind of your classic open post optical era layout here, because as you can see, there's no optical drive up there. This Sorry, is Jeremy. This is something new. It should be. They've got this metal shield here. I, I saw this. Was yeah, like on NZXT, NZXT yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, it's not quite NZXT width, but you know, maybe the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. But it's got metal your cable level. management. Yeah. Yep, it's got built-in cable management. Here's the fan that it comes with. It's got a ventilated panel. It's kind of weird. This is not all warped like this, but to my eye, looking at these pictures, it looks like it's all. Like, did Did you say it came with two one forties? 
two one forties. Yes, two hundred two hundred millimeter nice. fans. That's uh, nice. As you can see, it has that cutout you see on a lot of cases that allows a longer radiator to be installed in the front if you move the hard drive tray out of the way, which you can do. It's on. You have these two thumb screws to slide the tray out and move it to a different location. There should be green rings on those. They sh- you know what? I think that's just an external thing. Although okay. there was anyway, uh, they have these tracks. <laughs> they have tracks on well, the back. Where's the picture on. of the back? Help me. Quick, uh, quick. Did I delete the picture of the back of the case? I did. All right, I have to add it Why? back in. There's a picture of the back of the case without any components installed, and it's not here. Anyway. Huh. There are, I'll add that. It should be right after this paragraph right here. You can see the completed build. Uh, obviously, you've got room for huge graphics cards if you want to. Oh, as an aside, we are definitely not above editing the content after it goes live. We should, you know, no problem going Absolutely. in and I will things. add that picture because it needs to be added. And yes. here's the picture. Here's a picture of what I'm talking about. There are these plastic tracks here. Oh, this yeah. is a metal thing. Channels, oh, if you will. Oh, yes. is that how you did it? Yes, it's a channel. To, and I made another channel over here to the right because this channel isn't very big. So I had to like stuff the PSU cable over here in this cavity, which fit nicely, by the way. Why is and your power supply upside down? Because uh, I had to, because the fan has to point towards the Oh, back. yeah, the fan. Yep. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, there's an entire inch of space behind the motherboard tray. That's which wow. it's generous. It's big. And it, it actually allowed me to close the back panel without case bulge. Shoving it. Yep. And I said, rear side panel, case bulge is real. Ask your doctor about treatment options. It's right there in the review. Mm-hmm. Um, as to Case bulge lasts more than four hours. Please contact emergency. Hey, if gaming sessions ah. last more than four hours, your uh, temperatures will go up. You, the 4000D, <laughs> my only my brief testing with this was just to see, does it match up with the open test bench with performance with the 3080? And it does. Josh was absolutely right about airflow because certainly at idle, it's a lot cooler because just sitting out in the open air the thing was like 40 degrees 35 to 40 degrees now all of a sudden it was like 29 and then at load we didn't see any look here's a close-up we didn't see any reduction these are like mirrors of each other in clocks so you're not going to get any lower performance with this in the case and the temperatures were the same because there's the the target is the same as far as the uh the clocks the only thing that goes up is the rpms of the fan and it still was too quiet to really notice a difference. We, I topped out, what did I say here? Like 38.5, 38.4 decibels under full gaming load. That was after 10 consecutive iterations of the Metro Exodus benchmark, which is what I used to just get the case up to temp. But because this is so ventilated, it never really, the heat doesn't accumulate inside the case is my point. The only thing I did notice was that CPU temps are going to vary quite a bit depending on the type of cooler you use, obviously, but... Liquid cooler like I installed here, I had a 240 millimeter cooler up top. That was not ideal because I had all the warm air from the GPU go huh. up into the CPU cooler and my CPU temps went up into the mid 70s, which is fine, except on the open test bed, it was significantly lower than that. It was like 10, 20 degrees lower than that. So, Do you think if you'd have positioned the, uh, the radiator in the front that it would have been better? Yes. Yeah. Mean, that's the reason that companies like Falcon Northwest put their CPU on the front, the radiator up front, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that way it draws mm-hmm. in the cool air, and then you have to just kind of deal with GPU exhaust with your exhaust fans. But yeah, that that was not the ideal setup. I should have put it on the front. Mm-hmm. I give it the editor's nah, choice it's because it's, just it's to a freaking nice case with plenty of airflow for seventy nine bucks. So I mean, what else do you want? And tempered glass, I'm impressed. The tempered glass. I mean, it's tempered glass. I it and it's dark tempered. Usually. Not a lot of airflow in it, uh, your typical glass case, but uh, surprisingly good here. Well, it's because it has the ventilated front panel, Brett. Because most yes. tempered glass cases, they put tempered glass up front. They put it on the side. Yes. They sometimes even put it on the top. I'm talking about and the only the thing, 170 series. millimeter clearance for the CPU cooler is a little bit tight for us Noctua fans, but it should still be doable. It should be enough. I think those top out at like, I thought it was like 165, 160. Oh, I think mine's 180 in this range. thing, but. That's a Red Ripper. Wow. Oh, well, yeah, the taller Red Ripper model. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think this is necessarily the case for, you know, those big, massive workstation-style builds, but for a compact mid-tower case like this, I well, like For the new Ryzen's that I'm hoping to be buying in a couple of months, yeah. Exactly. You know what? It's time for Picks of the Week, that time of the week where the staff tell you what they recommend or something. Uh, Jeremy, I think, is first. 
Oh, this is available again? Hold on. Why not? Here. No, that's Josh. No, it's mine. Oh, it's Josh. No, okay. see the Josh release date. 11-1-2020. Oh. So, okay, for 229 bucks, which is what yeah. they're doing, supposedly. So it's, what, nine, ten days from now? Ten days? Yeah. Eleven? Yes, yes. Eleven. ten. Ten. And, uh, you know, I just can't resist. I mean, you, you, it's less than the uh, Samsung 980. Initial uh-huh. indications look like it's pretty close to performance. And, uh, you know, having a one terabyte SSD that fast, it's nice. Dare I, just, I, I click just, on the two terabyte? Want. Dare I do it? It's going to be pricey, but go ahead. Ooh. Well, it, you know, it's like Four fitting. two times as much. Yeah. But a little bit, no, yeah, yeah, about two times as much. Yeah, no, there's no premium on that. That's acceptable. That's good. What about it's the 500? Apparently, they're not shipping in Canada yet. The one bastards. Which we knew that the 500 is not where the value proposition is. No, no, I would absolutely. No, the one terabyte is, is really kind of the sweet yeah. spot. You know what? 229. The 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 one terabyte drives like this. They're starting to feel like call back to that first story when the X25M came down to 300 bucks for the 80 gigabyte model. 80, one terabyte is the new 80 gigabytes, I guess is what I'm saying. 2020's sure. one terabyte yeah. is 2009's 80 gigabytes. Okay. It's weird how the, all the installations of like games and, and uh, applications have grown to make that about the same. That's what I'm saying. Uh, now, this will be Jeremy's pick. Let me get it up on the screen. Just oh. click the trailer. Click the trailer? Where's the trailer? No. Yeah. After an ad, apparently. Oh, 40, die. 43. You can watch on YouTube. Oh, wait, I can skip it. Die. There skip you it. Go. But if I watch on YouTube, I've so, another ad. You do. We know what the best version of the first person shooter of Fallout was. But if you ever wanted to see it with the new Fallout 4 engine, because she looks pretty. That is not, and I mean, you know, your your the the glasses, the rose-eyed glasses from the past, make New Vegas look like this in your head. It didn't, but now soon it will. This is a project that's been going on for a little bit, and they've gotten to the point where they're what they're calling a pre-alpha, but obviously is uh, definitely an alpha. Uh, apart from probably some scripting and stuff, but uh, it, it's just utterly gorgeous. It, it's it looks like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun uh, because they were doing their best to just port the entire environs and storyline from uh, New Vegas into the Fallout Four engine, and therefore removing the stupid part of base building, so you won't have to worry about that anymore. Unfortunately, there are Casadores, and they suck. I hate those damn things. So keep an eye out for it. It's uh, still in production. It's not going to be coming out tomorrow or anything. But on the plus side, it ain't going to be charging you a million dollars to play for it either. So, I mean, you know, it's been three years in the works. Hopefully, we'll be seeing it sometime in 2021. So I I own New Vegas, but I don't own 4. Are you telling me that I need to buy 4 in order to play New Vegas and 4 engine? I that. That is the way that it's going to go. Yes. Crap. <laughs> oh, well. You don't have to play it, but just buy it. I'm going to make a snarky just remark. Look at it. I was muted, but I was going to make a snarky remark about uh, path tracing. Is it fully path traced, Jeremy? Because it didn't look like oh. it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it, it's, you know, it, it's more path traced than Fallout 76, which is apparently free uh, right now for a limited time. And I, don't think anyone's actually taken that offer up. <laughs> Strangely enough. <clears throat> hey, speaking of not taking people up on offers, Brett, you had a pick or two this week. You know, I kind of do. And I, I started out with, uh, oh my gosh, look at the price this has come to inside Newegg. And this is the third time that we have, as PC Per, have selected the 9900K. But psych, this is not the one that I mean. Hold on, hold I on. Really I just mean... want to point out here that by new... Three eighty nine ninety nine. Buy you. It's not bad. Five forty nine ninety nine. Right. You Let's could buy, buy used at Let's five forty nine. Let's buy used from. Okay, you could buy the used one. Corn All right, you could do that. They, look, they have eighty one percent positive ratings, Brett. 
I can trust them. But you're 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 killing my mic drop. All right, hold on. That's Maybe. what happened. Can, can I start again? The other link. Can I start again? You can. No. All right. Why did you? No, okay. First of again. all, don't send me. Ha ha! Fooled you. <laughs> Literally, it says ha fooled you in the show notes. Don't I do did. that to me. That's, don't do that to me. That's I did. Do, I did write that. I did. All right. Let's go to the real pick. Breaking the news: real pick. Brett has an actual pick, and he's not just being not, a jackass. Don't don't buy this from New don't Egg. Bet on. For God, for God's sakes, man, get down to your your local micro center and buy this damn thing for two ninety nine ninety nine, because that's a pretty reasonable price for the Intel. Eight course, sixteen thread, previous gen, yeah, CPU. It's not previous two ninety nine ninety nine. Brett, we've had it this is. discussion. It's not previous gen. Okay, it What's, is and it isn't. By nu- numerically, it is right because it says ninth gen on the box. But what's the difference yes. between ninth gen and tenth gen again? I mean, Sky Sky Lake with one less plus. Yeah. Well, the boost clocks aren't as high, but you could correct that manually. True, I mean, if if you win the silicon lottery, you could get you could hit five one five two on it. But you know, five zero is easily attainable uh, at this level of of silicon competency. So you know, why not two ninety nine ninety nine is a damn good price for this, especially if you're starting out with a Z three seventy or a Z three ninety, and maybe you're on a six hundred series. I mean, eighty six or ninety six hundred series. You know, and you only want to spend a few hundred dollars and get more out of your computer for a year or two, get this one. That's it. Did you ever name Last it? generation saying- motherboard. And also at 300 bucks, it's the same price as the uh, upcoming R5 5600X. Yep. But maybe you're on Intel. I would say if you already have a nice motherboard and you don't want to, like maybe you were on a Core i5. And you exactly, it's exactly what I'm saying. You have the yep. board already. Nice, like, ah, I don't nice want to buy a new board. Because if you jump on, well, the, if you're on Intel, you're going to have to buy a new board sooner or later. You will absolutely. That's you could just you could, thing. I feel like you could put it off for a year or two if you jump from a six 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 to an eight sixteen at higher clocks. Say you're on eighty six hundred K or ninety six hundred. I guess what I'm yeah. trying to say is. The only reason you'd buy this is if you already had a board and wanted a better processor than oh, the one you Oh, definitely. Have. Yeah, don't don't get into this. You know, don't to build buy a, a board for a 9900K <laughs> in no, 2020. No, no, don't, Even don't, if, don't do that. And if you're near the Madison Heights <clears throat> store, you can go to aisle 30 and aisle 33, Three. apparently. They have it in <laughs> it's two that aisles? much stock. <laughs> 10 plus in stock. Well, what does that mean? They have it so many of them. It's actually three <laughs> full aisles yes. of 990. <laughs> They've got a lot. Yeah. We, hey, we got a special truckload delivery from Intel. They are desperately they trying just, to get rid of it. They just backed okay. up the truck. Picture it for a second. Mm-hmm. They backed up this giant dump truck. And then he pulled it and, and just, they all they just, just kept tumbling out. out. Just kept rolling out and just kept piling up. And they were kind of shovel and they were picking them up and yeah. putting them in a bin. <laughs> Brett. Tumbleweed? Ah, oh, we wish we had tumbleweed <laughs> problems. We got Coffee Lake problem. Man, we cannot get rid of this Coffee Lake. Lower the price. <laughs> hey, I, I think somebody predicted that there would be some pretty big price drops for the next for the rest of the year and for the foreseeable Was future you? until some eleven. Are you patting products. yourself on the back? I am. I am actually doing that. <laughs> as soon as five thousand was announced, I'm like, we're going to see some lower prices on Intel. I don't have any, any answer to this. Um. Did it? The most important question. Can I bring this back up on the screen here? Uh, no. Does it come in this packaging? The answer is no. It did not. See, no. that's half the fun one. of this product. I know it is. The, yep. What is this shape called again? Tetrahedron or dodecahedron? Like dodecahedron. 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 Okay. Exactly. Did you never play role playing games as a kid? Crazy. No, I did not. <laughs> Does anybody have anything All else right. to add uh, before we wrap this we, insanity we up? We killed Josh. Week? He's dead. <laughs> no, we did that earlier, and Jordan got a beautiful picture capture of it. I know. And somebody, I, you couldn't see it because they were so fast. Somebody came in with a clear, and they, you know, brought it back to life. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I, I'm sorry if you've suffered through this, and it will probably get better, not necessarily next week or the week after, but at some point point before the end of the year it might get a little bit better smoother transitions well, different. gets different more interesting commentary better topics well certainly have better topics this is kind of a filler episode let's face it in every long-running series there's a filler episode or two here and there and i blame the writing staff for this one it wasn't very Wait good 
I didn't Wait write very well. Anyway, thanks for listening and or watching, and we will see you guys next week.